So they use a, a, a frightening, terrible picture of somebody who's been hurt by smoking to try to get you to say, boy, I don't want to do that because that could happen to me. But really, they know that they have to try to get people to stop doing things because we don't know how to do for ourselves anymore. We've lost that ability to look at something and recognize that it's something that we shouldn't be involved with. And I'll give you an example. Um, a friend of mine for many years who passed away recently was a smoker pretty much all of his life. And we would always say to him, you got to stop smoking, man. You just got to stop. You know, you, you want to be around a long time. You're right. I know it's bad for me. And my mother used to tell me, who on their, in their right mind would put something that's on fire in their mouth? <laughs> right? So he knew it. He knew that it was bad. He knew that it was detrimental. Mentally, intellectually, he knew it. But his confirmation bias said, but it's not going to happen to me. You can smoke. You've been fine. You're OK now. So smoking isn't a problem. It's not the problem for you than it is for other people, because you got it under control. And you see how that works? That, that, this is how your brain manufactures excuses.